Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV, and today I'm going to join a long line of YouTubers and review this Jackery 1000 Explore 1000 portable power station. Uh, last year I uh, reviewed their 500 model, and a couple months ago they offered to send me out their 1000 model for review, and along with it their 100 watt portable panel. So of course I agreed. The thing's worth a thousand dollars. I think the solar panels were 300, but I didn't agree to say anything they want me to say. All, every, all the opinions will remain my own, so you'll get my unique spin on it. I haven't watched any other videos on it or reviews on it, so I'm going to go through and uh, test out its charging abilities and its abilities to uh, power AC and DC items. So I'll try a bunch of different things on it, and then we'll come back at the end with my likes and dislikes. So a thousand bucks seems like a lot, but inside this unit there is a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And it also has a, a built-in battery that's a, a thousand watt hours. So you're getting a pretty good size lithium battery in there and a, and a pretty powerful inverter. Uh, so it's comparable maybe if you were to make your own out of quality parts, but it comes in a, in a nice package. Anyway, uh, let's get to my test. So I'll give you a quick look at it physically and then we'll start uh, testing charge and discharges. Here she is. So it's about the size of a 2.4 beer. Weighs in about 22 pounds. I always like the jackeries. They're nice and squat, kind of square shaped so they're, they don't fall over very easily at all. Uh, you got vents on both sides. There's some fans that, that push air through it when it heats up. Uh, the 1000 watt pure sign inverter has three outlets on it and over here we got a 10 amp output at 12 volt a cigarette lighter type and you got USB-C and 5 volt 2.4 amp USB and then a quick charge USB type 3.0 I guess that's for some of the modern phones that's your outputs DC and AC and then on the inputs you have two ways to charge it you can put it through this cylinder input and that's usually use the house charger for that plug it into a wall socket and then we have the they call them anderson type connectors anderson power pole but they're very very good for hooking up solar panels with so they put that in there which is a nice touch versus the older model and then we got the display much like the other one gives you percentage readout of uh, how much power you have left in your battery and then you got input and output watts so the jackery came with a couple different charging options we have a rather large power brick here to plug into the ac wall outlet then we also have a 12 volt socket cigarette lighter type deal and uh, one thing I, I liked when I opened it is it came with a nice long cord. I found the one that came with the 500 model a little short. But this is an extra length on that. So I think we'll do some charge tests. We'll, we'll try the DC first, see how long it takes to charge from flat right to full. Then we'll do the AC. Then we'll do some uh, solar panel charging tests. So let's start with the DC. First charge test using the DC input. Cigarette lighter type looks like we got 40 48 watts there. So, I'll time how long it takes to go from 0% to 100% full. Almost 24 hours later, it's finally charged. So, it takes quite a while to charge using the, the 12 volt adapter plug. Next, we'll do a test to see how long the Jackery can run our 43 inch TV here. So, it's charged to 100%. And running, showing it's drawing right around 85 watts. So we'll just let that go and I'll let you know how many hours it'll run it. Let's check it in. So a little over six hours now, and we're down to 30% capacity left according to the, the Jackery display. I'll come back when it uh, quits to give it just goes and it goes and it goes and what's that one percent all about fooling you yeah. 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 the fact that they have 
lost loved ones in their families. And, uh, and we have uh, offered condolences to all. They know that uh, the municipality... Oh. Okay, so that 1% lasted quite a bit. So 9, 12. 9 hours, 12 minutes. Now that I've ran it down right dead flat, we'll do a full charge test on AC plugged into the wall outlet. There we go, shows it's charging 100 and 150, 160, 160 watts. So we'll let it go and I'll let you know how long it takes to charge it fully again. Okay, here we go. Six and a half hours later, it's showing 100% on the display, which actually is a little better. They estimate uh, seven and a half hours by the wall charger, so a little bit better than what they advertise, so that's good. Now let's check out this solar panel they sent me. 100 watt solar Sega output 100 watts 18 volts. This is like a little foldable, portable, flexible panel, looks like. There's a little pouch on the back. There's your input wire. Anderson connectors on one end. A cylinder connector on the other. Blah, blah, blah. And looks like it's got built-in tilts, handle, it's quite lightweight. And on the other side here, there's the DC out, there's the, where you plug in the Anderson connector. Also noticed on the top here, it has some built-in outputs, USB outputs, so I guess when the sun's hitting it, it'll actually power things out of that. So let's unfold it, and we'll hook it into the Jackery and see how much wattage we get. It's pretty sunny out today. We're right around getting close to noon here. Got her all set up and plugged in. And what's the verdict I'm getting? I'm seeing right around 61 watts. 60, 61 watts. As a test, just for a comparison, I'm going to take my 100 watt Renogy panel and we'll hook it up and compare between the two. So the energy doesn't do quite as well, 56, 57 watts. So I decided to parallel these two panels together and see if I could boost the wattage. So I'm getting 130 watts out of the two panels. So you can add multiple panels. At 130 watts, I should uh, reduce the charge time quite a bit. Okay, so I added a 170 watt, one of those Bose RV panels I reviewed a little while ago. And still, it kind of maxes out about 135, 136 watts. And uh, that's as much as it gets. So, one thing though is if you put more panels in there, you, you keep your performance up better on, on a cloudy day. Because you'd still be able to max out your wattage versus a, a single panel. So the best you can do off of solar is about a maybe a six or seven hour recharge time, which is comparable to the the AC power brick that I tested beforehand. But if you just have a single 100 watt, it's going to take you a, a lot longer, maybe 14 hours or so. And a quick test with that 170 watt Bose RV panel. And it's putting out about 134 watts. So basically you could get a 170 watt panel and pretty well max out the charge to one of these boxes. And they're a lot cheaper. This thing goes for about $159 or so, whereas that little foldable affair is like $299, I think. So uh, this is rigid, of course, so that's the drawback. It's 24 pounds and rigid. 
but the other uh, advantage to it is you get down south and it's you get a really windy day that little flexible panel is going to be blown all over the place whereas this thing you could set it up and it would stay pretty solid next I've set up a little test area here and we're going to test what this Jackery box can power as far as its inverter. It's got the 1000 watt inverter, so it should be able to power some fairly high wattage items. We'll start with my toaster here, which claims to have a 900 watt maximum. I have my kilowatt meter here so we can get an indication of the wattage um, and also compare it to what the readout is on the Jackery here. So let's turn on the inverter here. And we'll put some toast in. First I'll go this the wattage there. Okay, what do we got? Looks like 760 watts. 756, so it's handling it. Notice this takes a little while for it to get its act together, but it's pretty close. 740, 747, 750, so it's in range. Next, let's test my Instapot. Very popular item with campers. This is the the smaller one. I think it's a three quart. Anyway, it draws about max 700 watts, and it runs off my 1,000 watt inverter in the camper, no problem. So it should run off this Jackery box. So I'm going to let it run through the rice setting here, and it's 12 minutes. It'll have to pressurize and then run for 12 minutes, and we'll see. Uh, what kind of wattage it draws and uh, also how much juice it takes. So we're at 93% battery life right now. So we'll see after it completes its cycle how much it draws down. Right now it's drawing about 568 watts. Doesn't seem to be having any problems powering it. So I'll come back when it finishes and we'll see how much juice it used. This would also be a good time to test whether you can use the AC inverter and at the same time be powering something off the DC. So let's give it a try. I'll turn on the DC here and we'll see. Just use this other Jackery as a test. Yeah, it's charging it, so input 42 watts. So it's able to use both at the same time. There's my yummy rice all made. Let's see what we got here. So we're down to 80%, so it's used, what was it, 13%. On the kilowatt meter, it's showing it used 0.1 kilowatt hours. So I'd have to guesstimate this box could probably power this maybe anywhere from six to, to eight, maybe at the most 10 cycles, but I'd, I'd guesstimate somewhere around six to eight cycles. So probably one question you have is, can the little box power this? So maybe we'll do the quick test while we have it out here. But, okay, here we go. So 569 watts. So this box shouldn't be able to handle it for very long before it's going to go into uh, overload and shut off being a 500 watt box. But we'll see. So about a minute later, it's still going. Voltage, 109.3, drawing 5.2 amps, 570 watts. What do you know? It actually ran the whole cycle. All 12 minutes of the rice cycle, I'm sure the pressure cook would be the same. So that's really interesting. These boxes have quite a bit of overhead. Same thing, one kilowatt hour, 24 minutes. Interesting. Good to know anyway. I wouldn't 100% count on it because it's right at the edge of this little box running running this three-quart Instapot. And if it's warmer out, today's not a very warm day. Maybe looking about 14 Celsius out right now. So uh, if it was much hotter, it may, it may push it into shutdown. But that's good. They can actually handle a little more than their rated wattage, which is a, a good thing. Okay, let's get serious now and give my heat gun a try. Start with a low setting. 
look like right around 446 watts. I'll crank it up to the higher. Crank that up to the top of the low setting. 850, 60 watts, somewhere around there. <clears throat> Now we'll go full out. Wow. 1220, 30 watts. It's actually more than what it's rated for. It says 1000 watt inverter. It's putting out 1246. On the kilowatt meter it's showing 1230. So putting out actually more than it's rated wattage. Oh, there we go. She died. I got a little uh, cautionary mark here. And she shut down. So it handled it actually for pretty close to 20, 30 seconds. Let's see if we can just turn this back on again. There we go. So it did overload, but it handled it for a while, which is a pretty good sign. Let's see if this box can run my microwave. I have a Sunbeam microwave, pretty standard RV type microwave. I'll try heating some water here. It seems to be handling it, but it's showing over 1200 watts. So it's going to shut down. Yeah, there it goes. It shut down. So not quite able to handle this larger microwave. Maybe a small 800 watt microwave or maybe even a 1000 watt, but I think this is more of a 1200 watt microwave. So a fail on that. My final discharge test will be a stress test. So I'm going to run it right at its maximum inverter load, right around 1,000 watts. And we'll just let it go and see if it can uh, run its battery right down and not quit and see how long the battery lasts. I suspect it should last about an hour. OK, she shut down right around the 50 minute mark. So it ran the heat gun flat out right around a thousand watts for 50 minutes so that's pretty good it's pretty good torture test didn't get overheated or anything like that fan was inside was running but uh, pretty impressed with that okay so I've gone through and tested the unit and used it for a while and I'm back with my uh, conclusion here sort of my likes and things I feel they could improve upon so it comes with a two-year warranty which is pretty good the company jackery has become a brand name in this type of stuff uh, it has really good uh, surge capacity on its inverter i really like the inverter it seems to perform really well and can handle a little bit extra than the 1000 watt output it's a pure sine wave inverter which is important if you're if you're running sensitive electronics and stuff like that um, the construction, overall construction of the box is good, pretty high quality. Also the quality of the cords and cables are, are pretty good too, I like that. Uh, I like the clean design, uh, it really kind of reminds me of the old Sony stuff from back in the day. Everything is really well laid out and simple. <clears throat> um, what else we got here? Good safety features. It has over temperature protection, short, short circuit protection. Uh, too much uh, current coming out of it protection. So a lot of built-in protections. You really can't hurt this box uh, Also, it's got a temperature controlled fan, which I like uh, My Jackery 500 when I would push this button the fan would come on and it would run the whole time I think they updated that later on But I like that it, the fan only runs when it needs to run and it seems to take quite a bit before it will run so it's it's not the it's a pretty good sounding fan too. It's not super annoying. Um, as far as capacity, uh, this is a really good capacity box. As far as if you're going to run something like a lot of people talk about CPAP machines, and I think with the with the big battery in this, it's got 
uh, one over 1,000 watt hours of capacity. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, inefficiency to that. So you have about 850 watt hours of usable capacity. But even that, if you take and divide it by the wattage that you're using, you'll kind of get an idea for different devices, how long you can run them. And uh, in in the older models, I found if someone had a pretty um, demanding CPAP, they might not get very many days out of it before they would need a recharge. With this one, you'd have plenty of capacity. Also, the recharge time is, is coming better and better. They're getting a lot better at the recharge time. So with the input off of the the AC, you can get maybe six, seven hours. And if you have a couple hundred watts of solar, you can also get in that range. So it gives you the capacity to fully recharge that in a day. And it may take many days to discharge it using something like a, a low wattage item like a CPAP machine. Um, it seems pretty durable as far as uh, the construction of the case. My, I've been having the, the 500 model, which is sort of the same type of case construction. And it's I've been using it for about six months and throwing it around and haven't had any problems with it. One thing I didn't mention earlier was this light. It's got a, quite a bright flashlight on it. And then if you hold it, it becomes an SOS light. Kind of an extra feature they throw on there. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, let's get to a few features that I, that I think they can improve upon. The battery life of this, they're rating it at greater to or equal to 500 complete charge cycles before it would drop down to 80%. It uses a lithium ion, an, N, an NMC type battery. Uh, so, you know, if you use this box a lot, it, in, in two or three years it may be quite losing quite a bit of its capacity versus some of the other ty types of lithium battery like the lithium iron phosphate batteries that I have the lithium uh, Lion energy ones that are the batteries in my rig they can last 3500 cycles so um, You may find in a few years if you use this box a lot You may need a new battery and it's not a user changeable type deal You'd have to send it into the factory so just something to be aware of. We'll see how it plays out because these boxes have now started to be on the market for several years. So that would be one kind of concern is, you know, how long is the battery truly going to last in this? And what are they going to charge you to swap it? Because a lot of this box's features and inside guts will last a long time, but the battery is sort of the, the lifespan, kind of like cell phones. You know, once your battery's cell phone, the battery's dead, you pretty well get got to get a new phone. Um, another thing I noticed, this adapter gets quite hot when it's charging. Not too hot to keep your hand on, but it's pretty, pretty warm. So um, I wish they would uh, be able to cool it a little better. You never know, because that will wear out the internal components on that as well. And this doesn't look like a, a cheap item to replace. Um, operating temperature, they're listing the Jackery as... Uh, It'll operate in a range of 14 Fahrenheit to 104 Fahrenheit. And that upper range kind of concerns me. I don't know if it shuts off once it gets to 104 Fahrenheit or if it keeps working or they just recommend in that range. But, uh, you know, a lot of places, if it's this box is sitting out in the sun or something like that, it could get quite hot. Charge time. They've really improved the charge time, maybe doubled the charge time compared to the smaller box. But... I wish they could even do better than that, make it, you know, charge in maybe three or four hours would be a lot more helpful. So I guess they're working on that. And another thing I wish they could improve upon is this 12 volt output. It's nice to have 10 amps, but if they could get that up maybe around 30 or 40 amps. Um, so this thing, it's got a big battery and it'd be nice, you know, you could power a trolling motor or a, an air compressor, a large air compressor. Some bigger 12 volt items could be powered off of. It can power most things, but uh, it'd be nicer if they could uh, up that a bit, especially when you're paying so much for a, for a power box. Let's move on to the solar panel they sent out. This is a 100 watt foldable. Uh, it goes for $299, so it's quite pricey for 100 watts. Uh, they did a pretty good job on the construction here and the connector. Um, nice hides away like that. They also have the USB for charging phones or other USB items right there. Um, 
it's really lightweight and I like how they have this is magnetic there the, the clasp on there to close it kind of a neat feature seem to get pretty good output even compared to my Renogy panel but a um, couple things I don't really like about it is it because it's lightweight and little stand they gave you this little flimsy stand like that you get any sort of wind this thing's going to be blown around and if that thing blows and lands on rocks I'm sure it's going to scar up this it's kind of a, a plastic film also the material they made it out of is a, a cloth like and you can already see it's getting dirty just for limited use that I've put on it so far one nice touch they've installed ring grommets on each corner so I guess you could combat the wind problem by uh, mounting it onto something a little more sturdy like a like a large piece of board or something like that and the final quibble with it is it's not waterproof so you know you're using solar panel outside you never know when a when a shower is going to come through or, or a, you know a thunder shower and totally soak something so uh, that's one downfall of this I don't know it probably wouldn't do much if it got really wet but maybe a problem with the USB over here there you go that's the Jackery Explorer 1000 power box and the solar Sega 100 watt solar panel I'll continue using them and come back if I find any major problems with them. Um, if you're looking to uh, buy one, I'll put some links in the description to different places you can look at uh, getting them from. So far, they've been really hard to come by. They can't seem to keep them in stock, so hopefully they'll come into stock and you can grab one if you want one. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.